Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly break down Chelsea's most recent 4 0 thrashing over Everton. When we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Chelsea in a 4 3 3, and we end up seeing Everton in a 4 4 2. And the key themes to Chelsea winning this game comfortably was one, Olivier Giroud was winning the individual battles against the Everton center backs. Two, they were able to have a 3v2 advantage in midfield, which allowed Billy Gilmore time on the ball to help Chelsea play through Everton press and three Everton had no answers for Chelsea's midfield runners combined with the fact that they were constantly conceding possession when you look at how Chelsea were lined up they ended up dropping off into a 4-5-1 without the ball and what we ended up seeing from Everton is that yes they did have two strikers up front but they wanted Sigurdsson and Bernard to shift into central positions to make it 4v3 and then have the fullbacks push forward you're having Lucas Digne and Sidibe running at Alonso and as Pelicueta, and you would fancy those battles if you are Carlo Ancelotti. But what ended up happening here, besides the fact that they were poor in possession, constantly giving away the ball, was the fact that Chelsea were fully equipped with that. For instance, you could look at the left-hand side, where you end up seeing Pedro tracking back to cope with Bernard, so then you can have Sidibe looking to get in those 1v1 situations with Marcus Alonso, and Pedro offers that help too. So there was no real opportunity for the overloads, Unless you did have Willian tucked in a bit too narrow and Digne could push forward. But what also helped is that Willian and Pedro could shift in a bit narrow to compress the space in those central zones and to ensure that that 4v3 battle doesn't ensue. As for instance, like I said, if you have Bernard pushing forward into a narrow position, you can have Pedro stick to him. And then you have Mount, Barkley, and Gilmore able to cover the rest of the players with Willian obviously looking to track back and close down Digne. So for the most part, Everton didn't really test Chelsea's backline. A lot of it was due to their poor passing, and perhaps they could have found a different outlet towards goal because the only real chance they did create stemmed from a Zuma mistake at half, which ended up seeing Calvert Lewin being played in by Richarlison, but he fired his effort inches wide of the net. Nevertheless, this was all about Chelsea, and what you end up seeing here is that Everton were dropping off into two banks of four, and they were looking to press high from the front with the strikers closing the center backs. But the problem there was that Chelsea had that 3v2 battle in midfield and it allowed Gilmore to drop off into those spaces or shift laterally to spaces on the outside of the forwards to receive the ball. So there was no real attempt by Richarlison or Calvert-Lewin to drop off deeper and compress that space to ensure that they block off the passing lanes for Gilmore. That's often what we see from sides that look to play in a 4-4-2 just so they can have the extra striker was that rather than pressing the center backs, you can have the two strikers sit on Gilmore and allow Rudiger and Zuma to push forward. That would have been the better option for Everton and then they would simply just have to cope with the fact that Giroud may win his individual battles with Holgate and Keane. And the other factor here is that you need Tom Davies and Andre Gomes to track the run of Ross Barkley and Mason Mount. And that was a key issue for Everton here. Because even if you have Gomes or Davies step into the path of Gilmore, Chelsea's passing was sharp. And that leaves a free player in midfield often Ross Barkley or Mount pushing forward, and that would allow them to get into advanced positions. So when we look to Chelsea's first opportunity, we already get to witness how they're able to utilize Giroud and get the better of that midfield battle. What you end up seeing here is Rudiger sliding the ball out to Azpilicueta, and before Sigurdsson could step towards him, he clips a long ball into the path of Willian dropping off ahead of Holgate. The reason why Holgate has to pick up Willian is because Barkley is free with Davies stepping out into to the path of Gilmore and it ends up seeing Lucas Digne step into his path. William ends up letting the ball roll across his body and it falls to Giroud who slides the ball across Keane and Holgate into the path of William breaking into that right channel. You have Keane coming across and William's able to split both Everton's center backs and get the ball across Sidibe for Mason Mount making a free run into the box, but he sidefoots his effort and it forces Pickford into a save. In that breakdown, what you can see there is that you have Giroud's ability to win the battle against the center backs. The midfield overload ends up seeing Digne pushed out of position and no one tracking the midfield run of Mason Mount. And shortly after that, Chelsea were able to take the lead. And what we see from this goal is the fact that without picking up Gilmore, Chelsea found it 
it very easy to bypass Everton's press. You have both center forwards stepping out to Rudiger and Zuma, and Zuma's able to play the ball into Gilmore by splitting those two forwards. Gilmore turns, and he ends up locating Mason Mount in between Davies and Bernard. Again, a huge gap in that Everton shape, and Gilmore's able to find it based off the fact that they have no midfield players pressing him. Gilmore finds Mason Mount, he breaks forward, and he ends up sliding the ball out to Pedro ahead of Sidibe, with Marcus Alonso making the overlapping run. We did see Davies tracking back into the box to provide cover, but what we end up seeing there is Pedro cuts in on Sidibe, he ends up splitting Bernard and Davies to find Mason Mount who continued his run towards the box. Davies tries to close him down but Mount turns away from him and he's able to fire a low effort on goal and that puts Chelsea ahead. In that sequence you have Gilmore exploiting that 3v2 battle in midfield, you have no one picking up the runs of Mason Mount and Everton are punished there. And seven minutes later, we're able to see Chelsea double their lead, and that stemmed through another Everton mistake through their possession, and again, Chelsea finding gaping holes throughout their midfield system. What we end up seeing there is Holgate playing a long diagonal ball over Sigurdsson into the path of Azpilicueta, and Azpilicueta pokes that ball in between Richarlson and Sigurdsson to find Gilmore. Gilmore's able to turn away from that gap, and with Andre Gomes stepping, he ends up splitting the Everton central midfielders to find Giroud dropping off ahead of the center backs and we also see Barkley making a run off Gomes to receive the layoff pass. Barkley receives the layoff pass ahead of that Everton back four and he ends up splitting the center backs to locate Pedro running goal side of Sidibe in towards the box and he makes no mistake from point blank range and that was how Chelsea were able to double their lead but again poor possession from Everton, Gilmore with space in that deeper zone and then you have midfield runners getting into good positions as we end up seeing Giroud make the layoff and Pedro making a run in behind and it was so simple for Chelsea to bypass that Everton shape. And when we look to one final example to see how easy it was for Chelsea to bypass Everton's poor shape, what we end up seeing is Azpilicueta stepping forward from his own half, Sigurdsson not stepping into his path until later on and what Azpilicueta is able to do there is able to split that big gap in between Gomes and Sigurdsson to find Giroud dropping off ahead of the center backs and he lays the ball off into Mason Mount darting in between Holgate and Digne. What ends up happening there is that Digne has to come across but we end up seeing Mount bump into Holgate and the ball ends up falling to Giroud and Giroud fires a tame effort on goal. That opportunity wasn't about the Giroud chance in itself but it was simply about Azpilicueta having all that time to find Giroud dropping off. Giroud did a good job of occupying the center backs and once once again, you have a midfield runner getting into advanced positions because Andre Gomes and Davies weren't tracking those runs. We ended up seeing Ancelotti switch systems midway through that first half. And what we ended up seeing him do now was that we had Bernard move into a central zone and essentially Everton was a midfield diamond. The problem here now is that although they did have Bernard on Gilmore, which did kind of decrease his overall threat, but didn't necessarily shut him out of the game, the issues that Everton did encounter was simply down the wider areas because Davies in particular wasn't doing a good job of shifting out to that left-hand zone and Sidibe was often caught in 2v1 situations against Pedro and Marcus Alonso, but luckily for Everton, Chelsea didn't make the most of those chances. However, unfortunately for Ancelotti, we did see Bernard leave the game at halftime and Walcott did come in and Everton moved back to a flat 4-4-2 and essentially within those opening 10 minutes, Chelsea you were able to kill off the game. Initially, what we end up seeing here is Everton actually doing a good job of having 3v3 in that left-hand zone with Mason Mount shifting over ahead of Sidibe. You had Marcus Alonso take Davies out of the game with a run into that left channel, and Pedro got the ball in a deeper position, slid it across Gomes into the path of Barkley, and there was a huge gap between Gomes and Sigurdsson. Barkley does get the ball and he holds off Sigurdsson, and what he ends up doing there is that he pokes the ball across Sigurdsson into the path of Willian. Sigurdsson's taken out of the game, Williams ahead of the back four, Azpilicueta's making the overlapping run, Dinier makes a shift towards that zone, and that creates an avenue for Williams to fire a low unstoppable effort past Pickford, and shortly after that, from a short corner kick where we don't see Sidibe getting tight to Willian as Walcott is overloaded, what ends up happening there is that Willian delivers a cross into the six-yard box, Giroud peels off Holgate, and gets goal side of 
Sigurdsson to ensure that Chelsea kill off the game. But when you break down that game as a whole, Lampard won the tactical battle here, but put simply, Everton were poor. Going forward, they couldn't complete passes, and without the ball, Chelsea consistently bypassed their overall shape. Everton had no answers for Giroud, who were bullying both Everton center backs. Ancelotti didn't react to Gilmore bypassing Everton's overall shape based off the fact that it was 3v2. The best solution for him was to put those two central forwards in between Gilmore and allow the Chelsea center backs to push forward. And Davies and Andre Gomes couldn't cope with the midfield runs of Mason Mount and Ross Barkley. They consistently got into good attacking zones and frankly when Chelsea got into good areas they made the difference there with their finishing and this was too easy for them. Hi everybody thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show and if that wasn't enough don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast the best soccer slash football podcast in the world available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker and any Android apps on your Android devices.